running the speed option quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what's the key to blocking that well? You know, I, I think there's a lot of things that go into the play, right? And, and the biggest one is understanding who you're optioning and, and us dictating who that is and, and whether that's by our formation or by the, the way the defense presents it and then the way the quarterback handles it. There's, there's, there's some layers to it, so it's, it's, it's on the O-line kind of attacking the defense correctly. It's on the tight end if he's involved and, you know, leaving a guy for the quarterback. And then it's the quarterback kind of getting it to the edge and, and reading the defender at that point in time. So, um, you know, it's, it's not something you kind of dabble in. I think that I think Giovanni specifically has, has done a great job of, of stretching it and, and putting that defender in a, um, in a bind, right? That's, that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate a, a person, no different than a – RPO, except for now you're just pitching the ball. So, you know, you kind of go back and through the history of football, and this is what they were doing, you know, 20, 30 years ago. This is all they had for RPOs. Well, now we're, you know, people are bringing it back. So it's been fun, and, and the kids have, have enjoyed it. So uh, we'll keep doing it because it makes it hard on defenses. Does it put a, a, a real um, stress on mobility for your offensive linemen? Um, you know, get into the edge like that. Yeah, I mean, they're they're yeah. You got to be able to block different fronts. So sometimes you you're out leverage. You got to go run and get your leverage. Like the guy might be ahead of you in in uh, in the pre snap alignment. So you got to go run and create and create leverage as you're running. Sometimes it's the the way the defense aligns. Sometimes you have leverage, and what we say is keep your leverage. The guys are in, inside your alignment, so keep them inside your alignment. Let the quarterback attack it. So based on when we call it and. The situation in the game that it happens, you know, it, it dictates how hard, how far we got to cover. Excuse me, how much ground we got to cover on that specific play. You look at uh, the touchdown in the first overtime. Nobody had leverage on their guy. We had to run and go create leverage. So uh, it was fun. And then other times we ran it. And the guys were inside, and, and we just kind of um, ran vertically up the field and captured the, the edge. Not not to wear this out, but on that play, mm -hmm. who had to run and do that? You know, really Grant Stark and uh, Grant Stark and Flavio. And the tight end had to kind of create what we call the wall on the front side. And, and bam, really everybody's defender was aligned inside of them. So you start at the point of attack with Grant Stark and Flavio and bam, they had to run and, and capture their play side gap. And then Josh and Tank on the backside had to uh, secure the backside gap so we didn't, we didn't create run throughs. Who's you know, the coach in the film room that says, well, let's try the option? It seemed like you guys busted it out for Purdue and we hadn't seen it. Them. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is something I've done in my past, and and, uh, and and it's kind of been with me for a while. So I, I don't know. I guess I brought it up, but I think other guys have, have seen it. Um, there's a lot of things that I've we've kind of all added to the offense. That's what's been fun working with uh, Coach Gunderson as, as the coordinator. It's it's been fun to all of us have had opportunities to bring things to the table and, and add twists to the run game or the pass game or protections and and uh, and, and so yeah. So I think. I don't know, maybe I did. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, the tight ends have uh, not caught a lot of passes, but how big a role have they played in, in the running game and just basically their performance in the first five games? Yeah, I mean, they've done really a, a heck of a job. You know, you, you look at some of the run schemes we've had, you put them at the point of contact, and, and you're, you're gaining on average around 260 yards a game. Like, it's pretty. It's it's a it's a it's kudos to them, right? It's it's putting them at the point of contact and running the ball at them, and them them sustaining and us having success. So, um, really really proud of all of them. And, and Coach Boyer's done a good job of, you know, playing um, a plethora of guys. You know, it's not just the same one or two. You know, we're we're mixing in a bunch of different guys. So, um, when when their number is called to be at the point of contact and when there, they've done a great job. And then. Other times we're we're running away from them. And they got and JT has to sprint and cut off a seven technique. You know they they've shown the the, div, the diversity in their uh, in their talent, which is really good. And and you look at when you start running the ball, and then you look at JT's explosive passes. That that's the exciting part, right? You run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and then you throw an action off of it, and then tight end's wide open. So it's the first time where it's kind of married, but it'll continue to go as long as we continue to run the ball to set those things up. I mean, you know, I think the first uh, big catch was was uh, was to JT running across the field, which was exciting. I mean, that, that was that was exciting for for him and the offense, and kind of got us going at that point in the game. You feel like that part of the game might open up a bit more passing to the tight end. Yeah, I mean, just the more you run the ball, you're you're creating different ways to get the ball into people's hands, whether that's, you know, deep shots to the receivers down the field or, you know, actions to the tight ends escaping through, you know, because 
when you're when you're playing teams that allow the tight end to climb to the second level, well, to the defense, it looks like the tight end is going to go block the linebacker, block the linebacker. Oh no, he slips the linebacker and gets to the, gets behind the the linebacker at the second level, or you you bring him in motion and he blocks the DN on one play, you bring him in motion and he's going past the DN, or he's sliding behind the defense. So, you know, I think where we're, we do a great job offensively as coaches, and, and I give it to, you know, Coach Coach Gunderson, and Coach Boyer, and Coach Fence, is they try to marry what we do in the run game. So I present different ways to, to be creative in the run game, but still have sound runs, and then they take what we do, you know, what we have in the run game, and then, Okay, how do we marry pass plays off of it? So it's been fun, and you got to see it uh, kind of come to life uh, against Colorado State, and really specifically with uh, a couple of passes to uh, to JT. Reno's defense, their D line. Uh, what's your analysis here on this uh, what, Tuesday? Yeah, you know, I, I got a lot of respect for the way they play. You know, they're they're going to play hard and physical, and they, you know, what I I coin is they're going to play knockoff football. Um, I talked to my guys this week. You got to win the first touch. I mean, they're. They're going to get off the ball. When the ball snapped, they're getting off the ball and trying to carry havoc in the backfield. All right, so if you are late off the snap or you aren't physical at the initial, at the initial contact, they're going to win. So it's about owning that. It's owning the line of scrimmage and then owning the first touch. So if we own the first touch, we've got a great opportunity to win that one-on-one rep. Um, so it's going to be like that all game. They, they've done a... You know, I know their record is one thing, but I, I think they play hard. They fly around. I think the backers do a great job of... You know, they're kind of built to run sideline to sideline and, and the D-line to create, you know, get vertically up the field and, and uh, create havoc in the backfield. So um, hopefully, again, we'll, we'll put them in binds and, and put people in conflict. And, and, um, and you know, I'm not going to shy away. We're going to try to run the ball like we've done. What have you liked the most about what Flavio's just giving you guys and stepping in? Yeah, I mean, golly, he, he's done a he, – he's been great. You know, you look at the – you know, Coach Gunnerson brought it out. Um, the the two point or the the double overtime run at the end of the game. Like everybody, you know, from the tight ends across the O line, everybody did a great job. Like it was a perfect, beautiful play. But you you isolate Flavio, he blocks it correctly, grabs the linebacker. Well, the linebacker runs into the safety, which runs into another defender. He blocks three people on the play. So you you look at that and and you're excited for him. You're excited for somebody that you know didn't get. Well, the playing time he wanted a year ago and was rotating early and, and, and him and Volton were sharing reps and, and he was just kind of keep, ch- um, you know, charging on and, and getting better every day. And then he's kind of earned himself, you know, more playing time. And, and I'm really proud of him because it's, it's hard to play football. It's hard to play football no matter what your role is, but it's, it's hard when you're not, you know, the guy playing. So, you know, his first, his first you know, two years here, he, he wasn't playing. So now you get a opportunity to be the guy and he's really taken advantage of it and you look at his production each week it's it's gotten better so I'm really proud of him and I'm really proud of uh, you know what the player he's become you know especially since I've arrived in December big picture what have you liked the most about about the way the line's playing you know I think the continuity uh, I've been really pleased with it um, you know coming into a program that's a special to me you want and you get an opportunity to run the O line you want to be the best you know, ever, right? That's my goal, right? I mean, I'm not going to shy away from that. I want to come in and, and this place is special. I wanted, to, I wanted to have the best offensive line this place has ever seen. Well, it's kind of hard when you return one starter, okay? But so we've, we've put guys in positions, right? We brought in Bam Wells and, and, and Tank and moved Josh and Grant Stark and you had Flavio and Tyler Volton and Jacob Strain. You got all these missing, you know, got all these pieces and you try to gel them. And, and I think those guys gelling as quickly as they have done has, has really made me a proud coach. You know, just to be honest with you, like the way those guys, you know, interact and bond together, it, it reflects the way they play the game of football. You know, the, the way an offensive line goes out on Saturdays and, and plays as a one solid unit reflects how they approach, you know, the meeting room, the, the lunch room, the, the – locker room, all those things, it transcends that. So if you see an offensive line that's divided on the field, they're sure as hell divided off the field as well. So really proud of the way they've done that. And then, you know, the running backs have, have played hard. It's, it's, it's helped us. So, okay, last maybe question. Coach uh, yesterday said that he was expecting to get results on JAM either yesterday afternoon or today. Yeah. Do you have an update on where things Yeah, I, you know, um, I, I, I'm, I'll leave that for Coach Bray. I don't, I don't comment on uh, injuries. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.